All right, good morning, gentlemen. So those of you um, that are watching this, I'm only gonna be focusing on the lecture content of the information. The rest of this you did do in class, and if you did not, then please email me so that way I can help you out. The first thing that you're gonna do is you needed to complete an open note mini quiz on electron configuration. It was very easy, it is on Canvas. Um, so those of you that are online, that's where you completed it. Then, excuse me, we did the spectral tube lab. We had about 15 minutes to do that. Um, I did go through a little bit of information before we went back there, so you just had an idea. And I will cover that here. Um, but I did plan on recording this, so it is on a different YouTube video under spectral tube lab. So those are where the images are located as well as what we did in the lab. Then I'm going to go over a lecture and then we had energy calculations. Now with the worksheets, I did take the time and I excuse me, solved for all the answers, and I posted keys for you to use. The light calculations are a little difficult, so I'm planning on not testing you too heavily about that, but I will talk more about that next week. So the first thing that you need to know is that we have different spectras um, of light that come out of elements. So for example, hydrogen has a red, yellow, and green, and a violet. Um, so we can see that in the image, that those colors are what we get when we have our diffraction grading um, glasses on. Now, spectral tubes are pretty much like I like to think about like this. It's like a light bulb, and the light bulb is filled with an elemental gas. And when these are energized with a power source, so electricity, they glow. Now, with my naked eye, I can't really see how they glow, like the colors. I just go, okay, well, that's what I see when it glows. However, if they're viewed with diffraction grating, you see unique banding patterns. So for example, this is what I would see with my naked eye, but when I have my diffraction grating, this is what I get. So diffraction glasses are, they separate the constituent colors for what we see. So we get Roy G. Biv. So think about how a prism works, that I have white light come in and then I see all the colors. So an example is if I look at a white bulb, I would just see white light, but when I have my diffraction grating on, I have this appearance with all the colors. Now, when you see it, the original beam is always in the center of the image and the multiple copies of that diffracted light surround it. So that's what you're kind of seeing where this is my original one and these are all my diffraction grading colors. So that's what we completed in lab using our spectral tubes and we took pictures of them. There is a video on Canva on Canvas that's linked as well as on YouTube um, on my channel here that you can use as a reference. And there's neon, by the way. So what we're seeing essentially is electron jumping. And I do have this video here. I'm not going to be playing it in class. Um, however, that's what we see. So now we have our two different models. So let me like move down here. Hi, how are you? I'm in the corner. So we have our Bohr model. Our Bohr model is where electrons orbit the nucleus like rungs on a ladder, and it's very 2D. The idea is that the electrons can jump in between these rings, where we go my first shell to my second shell to my third shell. To do this, we have to use a quantum. Now, a quantum is an amount of energy needed to jump between these rings. So that's the name we give for the energy that is required for the electron to jump. So it's a quantum of energy. Now, I can't just jump because I feel like it. I do have to take energy in to do that. So think about it this way. Um, when I'm an electron, if I'm sitting on my first orbital, I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to stay here. I'm like, this is, this is nice. This is my home. But the minute that I have energy added, I'm like, okay, um, this is too much energy to be at this first level, so I'm going to pump up. Think about it like this. My quantum model, we don't have a specific location for our electrons. We have where they're not 95% of the time, but we know they're somewhere in their orbitals, which is a 3D space. So a quantum of energy, if I'm at a 1s and I take in a quantum of energy, I can hop up to a 2s, which means I'm going to change my orbital. It's just because I have more energy that I can go into a higher energy orbital. Energy is always asked like this. It's always associated with E but it's like how much energy is in the light? How far did the electron jump? It's kind of that information that you're getting out of energy. The unit associated with energy is always gonna be joules and it's always a quantum of energy. So it's an amount of energy. It's not gonna be one, it has to be greater than one. Electron jumping, I'm gonna pop up. Hi, how are you, I'm up here. So we kind of did this in our flame test lab. However, the idea behind it is we have two things. We have absorption and we have emission. Absorption is what the energy is coming in. So I'm taking an energy and it's what causes me to jump up to a higher level. So before I had nothing, I absorbed the energy and then I jumped up. 
once I'm kind of at that level, I don't, I can't maintain all that energy. I need to go back to my ground state of energy. So what I would do is I'm going to emit that energy in the form of light, and then I will jump back down. So light is always given off as the energy is emitted from my electron returning to its ground state or its original level. Depending on the size of the jump, a different color is seen. So if I have a very low jump, I'm going to see maybe the color red, as whereas if I get rid of a lot of energy because I do a very high jump, I'm going to see violet. So connecting color to electron jumps, um, the higher the energy, so when I emit it, the higher the energy, the color will be purple. The lower the energy, it's going to be red. And if it's in the middle, it's about green yellow. So it's just kind of figuring out if it's either a high energy or a low energy, what's being emitted. Excuse me. Based on the color. And all elements have different um, spectrums of light that they give off when they do this. Hence why we can see it in the spectral tube. Now, colors of light have different amounts of energy. We kind of talked about that, where red end is the lower energy in light, and the purple or violet end is the higher energy. But you can kind of see this with the wavelength, because if you look at red, it looks just like it's kind of slow wavelength, whereas the violet's a very fast wavelength. So slow wavelength kind of feels like lower energy, whereas fast wavelength feels like higher energy. To do this, we um, use visible light, and the visible light is on the electromagnetic spectrum, which is our EMS. And it's a total of all the electronic and magnetic waves in the universe. It's just in a very simple graph in a way. The visible spectrum, that's part of the electromagnetic spectrum, and it's what we can see. So I can't see gamma rays, x-rays, UVs, infrared, microwave, or radio waves, but I can see visible light. And the higher frequency or the shorter wavelength is gamma rays, and radio are longer waves and a lower frequency. Visible spectrum is the part of the EMS that we can see. So there's all of this that I can't see, but I can see this little sliver. And here's just another one for you. It's just to give you kind of an idea of the size of waves. It's just a lot of visuals. Now, to do this, we use two different things for calculations. We use our wavelength, which is associated with a lambda. This is how big the wave is, and it's always in units of nanometers or nm. So when you're doing a calculation, you do need to make sure that you're taking your units and putting them into nanometers, because you um, you're going to take nanometers to meters because you're dealing with meters in your calculations. Um, we'll talk more about that in the calculations. The next thing is frequency, and that's with a new, kind of looks like a fancy V, um, and it's how fast the wave is moving. So these units are always going to be in hertz, or HZ, or cycles per seconds, which is CS. Okay, you do need to use your calculator for this. Um, this is very important that you know how to calculate these. And when you're using them, make sure you use the exponent or times 10 to the nth. Oh my goodness. Or your EE, second EE button. Your answers will be in scientific notation typically. So wavelengths is in nanometers, which is always times 10 to the negative seventh. Frequencies in hertz is times 10 to the 14th. And energy in joules is always tens to, times 10 to the 19th. Um, don't worry about writing those down because I'll talk about, it's kind of easy to know what you're doing it in. So these equations are what we're going to use for our calculations, which is the speed of light equation where C is equal to frequency times wavelength or nu times lambda. C is always equal to 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Frequency and wavelength will change. And then we use our energy equation, which is E is equal to H times V. H is Planck's constant, and it's always 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34. Frequency and energy will also change. So you have two variables that will always be constant. These numbers will never change, so it's important that you write these down somewhere because when you're using these equations, if you have frequency and you need to solve for energy, you will have an H value that you can do with that. You never have to solve for H or C. An important note to know is that frequency is in both of these equations. So I have frequency in my energy and in my speed of light, meaning I can work between and use both of these to solve for variables, which is what we're going to be focusing on now. So the first question I have for you is what is the energy of the electron that jumps from energy level 2 to 5? So if I want to solve for energy, I, ooh, I want to use the equation E is equal to H times V, so my Planck's constant, times frequency. 
However, I don't have a frequency and I don't have the energy. So what I do have is I have this right here. And this gives me the wavelength when I jump from a level two to a level five. So what I can solve for is frequency using the speed of light equation. So here's my wavelength, it's 434, I need to fix that. What is the energy? Well, I'm given that it's a wavelength of 434 and I'm asked how many joules of energy. I gotta fix that. Um, so I'm gonna use my speed of light equation. Well, first things that I need to do is I need to take my wavelength and I need to put it into sign, uh, my meters. So to do that, you'll take 434 divided by 1.0 times 10 to the ninth. That will give you a 4.34, oh gosh, times 10 to the negative seventh. That is where I get the wavelength that you'll be using in here that I plugged in right there because I do need to move it to meters. So now what I'll do is I'll take my speed of light, which is 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second, and I'll divide that by my wavelength, and that will give me my frequency. So when you put it in your calculator, you should get this frequency. Now, plug this value into the energy equation. My energy equation is E is equal to H times V. Um, I do have my H, it's Planck's constant. So I would take E is equal to 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 times 6.91 times 10 to the 14th cycles per second. And I should end up with an answer that is 4.58 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. And that is all, that's all she wrote, not too bad. So. Now this one is a little bit of a different question. It's the energy of a beam of light is 3.49 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. What color is this light? So when I'm dealing with color of light, I wanna solve for the wavelength. And the wavelength, if I go to my visible light spectrum, is what will give me where I am landing on that spectrum. So let's use our energies equal to HV to solve for our frequency. And then we will plug the frequency into my speed of light equation to solve for wavelength. So I take E is equal to H times V, and I plug in my E. My H is my given, so I'll take E divided by H, or 3.49 times 10 to the negative 19th, divided by 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34th, to get me my frequency. So let's do it in our calculators. Follow along with me. 3.49 times 10 to the negative 19th divided by 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34th. You should get a frequency of about 5.26 times 10 to the 14th. Now I'm gonna plug that into my C is equal to lambda times nu, where I will do 3.00 times 10 to the eighth for my speed of light divided by, divided by 5.26 times 10 to the 14th. Take a minute to do that in your calculator. I get the answer about 5.70 times 10 to the negative seventh meters. So now my final step is to do my wavelength in nanometers. So to do that, I'll take 5.70 times 10 to the negative seventh, and I multiply it by 1.0 times 10 to the ninth. That gives me 570 nanometers. I'll go look at my visible spectrum um, on Google, just look it up, and I will give a rough estimate that the color is about a yellow orange light. It's not that bad. If you have any questions, please let me know. I do have this example that I want you to try. So an energy of, in a photon of light is measured to be 4.5 times 10 to the negative 18th. What is the wavelength? So take a minute to solve for this. Cool. Pause this if you have not solved for it. So the first thing that you're going to do is that you're going to take 4.5 times 10 to the negative 18th, and then you divide that by Planck's constant to get us frequency. I get 6.79 times 10 to the 15th for my frequency. So now I am going to take my frequency and divide speed of light by frequency. And I get about 4.42 times 10 to the negative 
eight. Or when I solve for it, I should get about four, 442 nanometers for my wavelength. Not that bad. Now, the rest of the notes are pretty easy. The calculations are probably the most difficult. I will be posting a key on Canvas for you. So we have the wavelength and the frequency. These are important with your waves, but they have an indirect relationship, meaning the shorter the wavelength, I have a higher frequency, whereas the longer the wavelength, I have a lower frequency. So it's an indirect relationship. However, well, when I see this, so the longer the wavelength, the lower the frequency, the shorter the wavelength, the higher the frequency. Now, energy and frequency have a direct relationship. So the higher the frequency, the higher the energy, the lower the frequency, the lower the energy. It's just with our frequency and our wavelength is where it's opposite. That's all I have for you. Um, I will be posting answers to the lab as well as the worksheet for you to use as a reference, and I'll be taking it as a completion grade. My plan is if I do test you over this, I'll give you maybe like the speed of light and the frequency, and I'll ask you to solve the wavelength. I'm trying to keep it a little bit easier, so it shouldn't be too bad. If you have any questions, please email me, but that's all I have for you. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you around. Bye.